You know when you've got a conference call and you're first on, and there's that blissful silence when you can contemplate anything in the world? What do you do? I found myself in that situation the other day, and I ended up being a bit like Darth Vader. No, not like that. I wasn't a heavy mouth breather on the conference call. I built a Death Star. In PowerPoint. Just because, you know, I could. And then I invented an iron drive to move at sublight speeds around it. Pretty nifty. And it took how long? About two minutes. Let me show you how, using Bevel's 3D rotation and the new morph transition in PowerPoint 2016. Let's start on the spheroid with a large concave dish in the Northern Hemisphere, or Death Star and Super Laser Emitter as you might know it. How would you do it? Without getting a whole load of Geonosians and a Galactic Empire, of course. Well, I'd start with a circle, and then open up the bevel options in the Format tab on the ribbon, and then the Shape Effects function just here. If you choose Bevel, and then 3D options, you'll find the full 3D format options pop up. This is where the construction begins. If you imagine this circle as a flat piece of paper lying on a table that you're looking down on, the bevel function works on the shape in two ways. The top bevel provides height and form to the top of the shape, the part that you're looking at. The bottom bevel provides depth and form to the other side of the shape, the part that's resting on the table. Then you need to understand what the bevel options mean. If you choose the standard round bevel, for example, you can see that the shape gets a bit of a 3D edge to it. It's now like a cookie rather than a piece of paper, with a bit of height and rounded edges that curve to the flat top. This height is how much the shape sticks out towards you, while the width determines how rounded the edges are and how far the bevel gets stretched into the shape. So if you increase the width, you can see the shiny edge of the shape gets a bit close to the centre and stretches as the curve becomes flatter. If you increase the height, it becomes more defined again as the shape gets taller. And so you, what you end up with is... Well, hang on a minute, this is really confusing. I'm talking about a 3D shape and you're looking at it top-down in 2D, so you've got no idea what I'm going on about. Let's make things a bit easier and put it into 3D. Don't worry, no special glasses are needed. Just to make it easier to understand, under the 3D Format options, open up the 3D Rotation options. Go to Presets and choose the Perspective Relaxed option. Ah, so that's it. Now you can see the height and the curve of the shape. And if I increase the height on the 3D Format options, you can see it getting taller. And if I increase the width, you can see it getting rounder. OK, much clearer. And you'll notice that the top of the shape is rounded, but it cuts off fairly sharply at the bottom. Well, that's where the bottom bevel comes in. If you do the same thing using the bottom bevel, clicking on the options to choose a round bevel and then increase the height and the width, you see how the shape starts to fill out underneath now as well. So you've got it. That's how the 3D format options and bevels work. Great. So where were we? Oh, yes. Galactic domination. So, our spheroid Death Star needs to closely resemble a ball. This requires a careful balancing and matching of the height and the width of the bevels you choose. And typically, I find that they should be similar numbers. So for this, if you increase the height to 120 and the width to 120, you see that you get a nice round hemisphere on the top. And then do the same on the bottom to get your basic sphere. Marvellous. But what about the large concave dish and the northern hemisphere for the super laser emitter? It wouldn't be any use without that. This is where you need to think about the type of bevel you need. If you look back at the bevel options, you'll see there are several choices, and we've used the basic round bevel so far. But the next one along the list, beguilingly called Relaxed Inset, gives you a very different profile. Rather than being rounded and smooth, this one is rounded at the edges and then dips into the middle. This has some promise, and is a feature that all leading Mega Death Laser designers look for. It doesn't look quite right at the moment, the dish is far too large, which, as you well know, would lead to a diffuse laser that is difficult to focus. So adjusting the width of the bevel to bring in the curve is needed, which in turn reduces the diameter of the dip. 
and when you bring it in just enough, like so, you end with the perfect dimensions. The final thing to create the Death Star-like appearance is the skin of it. This is achieved using a texture flood fill effect. Go to the flood fill options and select texture where you'll find a whole load of choices that I'd never recommend you use. But amongst them, the newsprint option in the middle gives, at a distance, a rough approximation of the pattern on the Death Star. Ta-da! Or should I say, ta-da, da, 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 da. Now, what about that cool trick where you get to fly around it and see your new creation? That's achieved using the Morph Transition, which, sadly for many, is only available in PowerPoint 2016. And even then, not the early versions of 2016, so make sure that you're up to date on your Office 365 account. Morph works across two slides, and recognises any objects that are on both, and seamlessly transitions from one slide to the next. If you move the object on the second slide, during the morph transition, the object will move. Change the colour and it will blend to that new colour. You can even change the shape and size of an object and amazingly, if you change the 3D rotation of the object, it will spin the object around to a new orientation, which is pretty funky if you ask me. And because this is a recording and you can't ask me, I'll just come out and say it anyway. This is pretty funky. To enhance the effect, I put an image of a starry sky in the background and then copied it onto the second slide, where I've resized it and repositioned it. That way, during the transition, you get a nice parallax effect with the Death Star in the foreground and the stars in the background moving independently of each other. And there you have it your very own mobile, planet-destroying superweapon. Please use it carefully and don't leave the plans lying around.